What's up, y'all? This is Jay Watts with Uber Jeep AZ. Another video, another weekend down. Now, the other day I did a long video about how I was scouting rides. And, you know, I told the two at the airport one where I had to pick up that $12 surge or whatever. Well, update on that. You know, the guy tipped after that. So instead of $45, I made almost $50 in 23 minutes. Just wanted to update you on that. Sometimes tips kind of roll through late. I love to give my riders, you know, props on tipping. So I'm not going to leave the man hanging. He actually did tip. I appreciate that. If these guys ever watch the videos, just know every tip you guys give me, I appreciate it. I always talk about it online. And all it does is help build the life of somebody who cares enough to come pick you guys up in a really nice car. I clean this thing up nicely. I make sure it's in running perfect order every day. I do a lot. And you guys' tips help me out. So I appreciate that to all the customers that are actually watching my videos. I appreciate it. Lyft. I decided, you know, because that night I didn't use Lyft. So what I decided to do is the next night use Lyft. Now, because Lyft was kind of screwing with me at the airport that night, it's not that I was mad at them, but I kind of knew that they were like, uh, you know, Jeff is like, you know, they, they weren't paying me right. So Saturday, I said, I'm going to do just strictly lift. No Uber. I'm going to do strictly lift, but I'm going to do it differently. So I started at the house. You know, I was just scouting rides for a second. Right off the bat, ride hit. Bam. Started picking up rides. Now, I was trying to do all short rides. So I grabbed the short ride. It was a guy that lives not too far from here, grocery store. Picked him up. Another short ride. I tried to grab that one. The very next ride, they gave me a really long ride. It was a woman and her two daughters. They went to go see Stump like the little Broadway musical or whatever, but it was playing here in, in Mesa. So, and I'm like, okay, it's a pretty long ride, but it's to an area that doesn't have a lot of Lyft drivers. And I know it's North Scottsdale, like Happy Valley, Deer Valley. And once you get up there, oh, trust me, they have to pay for whatever. They have to pay. So went up there, I grabbed her, took her up there. She tipped me pretty amazing, pretty amazing tip. And I, we had a great conversation the whole ride. Her daughters were so tired. We had a great conversation the whole ride. But I grabbed another guy who just so happened to be up. There. As soon as I dropped her off, it was another guy drove a little far south, picked him up, took him up. And he was actually a, um, a student. So I picked him up. Great guy, whatever. Got him all the way back up there. But that's how it is. When you're up in that area, there's no other drivers up there. So you get your your choice of rides. And just all night, I was just banging out rides, banging out rides. Grabbed the guy. Drove him over to Sunny Slope, you know, dropped him off. He was a, a security guard. Great guy. Cool dude. We chatted the whole time, laughing and everything. Took care of me on the tip. And it was just, Lyft was just giving me good rides, like on purpose. Because they knew this dude would just jump over on Uber and go, you know, scout, scout, scouting rides on Uber. So they didn't want to lose me. They started paying me just like crazy money. I didn't drive a whole lot of hours because I was just like, you know what? It was, it was like an overcast night. It was kind of slow a little bit. I was like, I'm going to do the best I can do. Now, after the night was over, you know, you get reports about, you know, rain's coming in, California's raining, all that stuff. So I know I probably won't drive a lot this week. I didn't drive a lot last week. I don't drive in the rain. My car sits too low. I don't want to use the Jeep yet. I'm still, you know, working on getting that thing registered. So once the Jeep is up and running registered, I'll be back by ASU and I'll be driving in the rain with that big rig. I don't drive in the rain with my car. But I just wanted to show you guys a few of the rides that I was scouting, that I was actually picking up. People were tipping. The rides were amazing. The rides were great. Nobody was out Saturday night. Like nobody was picking up these rides and they were just like falling in my lap. So I was declining a few lift rides because they had some crazy stuff coming down the pipe. It was I was coming down the highway and they sent me an eleven dollar ride. But I had to go like three miles back up the decline. I'm not once I get on the highway and I'm going south, I'm not going back north. I'm not getting off the highway. They gave me a ride that was to the east of the highway. I was driving down, got off the highway. They canceled it. So I just turned the app off because I don't like that. So I can't. I turned the app off, drove towards Scottsdale, sat at the gas station, got me something to drink, got me something to eat, chatting with a couple of people there about the car or whatever, and just bing, another ride, picked that ride up. And it was just all night. You know, I was just scouting rides, just making sure I wasn't wasting my time. I did not want to give, you know, quality time to just a ton of rides just for a quantity of rides. I wanted all good rides. So I saved my car for only good rides. I didn't do a bunch of short, you know, $11 or $12. It was all good rides for the most part. But I tell people, when you're driving these apps, you've got to know your own worth. Know what you're looking for when you leave the house. Don't leave the house expecting them to give you money. 
You've got to tell them, I am here for money. Select Rise, that's about money. Decline Rise, that's not about money. A lot of people say, well, you're on an upgraded platform. It's easy to do. No, it's not. Trust me. I mean, we got one dude on another channel. He was on an upgraded platform for 46 hours. 46 hours this dude sat online and he got $309. I don't know how people make choices. I really don't. And I don't tell people how to drive. But if I'm sitting online for 46 hours and the most I can get out of it is $300 in a good market, this is an LA market, a good market. Either you don't know what you're doing or you don't want to drive. I don't know. It's one or the other. But on my channel, we got drivers, drivers that want to make money, drivers ready to get out there and do it. So I appreciate, you know, all the feedback in the comments and, and all the people who we inspire and motivate each other to not sit online for 46 hours, to not be on these roads for 80 to 100 hours, putting ourselves in, in, in dangerous way. You know what I'm saying? Get out there, get your money, get back home. It don't take that long to do that if you know what you're doing. A lot of people say, well, I know what I'm doing. I go out there 14 hours a day. Cool. You know what? I tell people, if that's the way you drive, cool, do it. But because some of us drive differently, don't make us lazy drivers. We're very intelligent drivers. I think we get paid a lot per hour because we know what we're doing. We don't take crap rides. You can throw $30 in my face all day. But if you tell me it's going to take you an hour to make that $30, I'm not interested. $45 is going to take you an hour to make that $45. I'm not interested. Because I could do two short trips and make 50 in 23 minutes. So why am I going to sit there for an hour? on one ride to make $45, it's a waste of my time. So you have to drive the way you drive and your market will support the way you drive because that's what it does. Your market knows you, Uber and Lyft knows you, the algorithm knows you, you'll never figure it out. The most you can do is keep declining trash that you don't want because they're gonna send you trash thinking you're gonna take it. They're gonna keep, and you just keep kicking it out. Nope, nope, nope. When you see something you like, a lot of people be like, man, you be kicking out $30 rides, $40 rides, $90 rides. You be kicking all that stuff out and you take a $17 ride. Yeah, because that $17 ride turned out to be $22 for seven miles, almost $3 a mile, a little over $3 a mile. Then I had a ride right behind that for $28. I, I want high per mile. I don't care about volume of rides. I don't want 100 rides. I want nine rides, nine good rides. That don't make me some really good money. That's all I want. I don't want, oh, I got 23 rides at an average of $10 a ride. It's a waste of my time at some point. At some point, it becomes a waste of time. You've got to buckle down and say, this is my minimum amount. Like, I don't take $5 rides. I don't take $6 rides. I definitely don't take $3 rides. There's not been a $3 ride in my car in a long time. One day I had, uh, I think it was an $11 surge, and it was a bar ride, like a $3, $4. So it was a $14 ride. That's the only way a $3 fare can get in my car. Give me a really high surge, you can get in my car. But if you're not giving me a high surge, I'm sorry, there's another driver who probably needs that for a quest or they're trying to fill a street. You're not getting in my car, not for $3. So my minimum is 10, 15 bucks. That's my minimum. And depending on where I am, if I'm at the airport, I need at least $2 a mile. So depending on where you are, you need to adjust your earnings. If you're in a, a concert or an event area, adjust your earnings. I'll take $5 a mile, $10 a mile, $11 a mile. Yes, I do $11 a mile. And a lot of people are like, how do you do that? Pick people up in concert areas right on the corner. Tell them where you're going to be at. Hey, meet me at this corner because it's so busy. And most customers are like, cool, thank you so much, brother. Swing in, grab them off the corner, drop them off. Most of them are parked away from the event. They just want to ride to their car. So just grab them, Take them and drop them off at their car, swing back around, grab somebody else, drop them off at their car. The last person you're going to grab is probably far away. So you've got three rides used to surge three times in one area real quick because you pick everybody up at the same corner. That's how I drive. I corral my riders. I tell them, be here and I'm going to get you there. I'll put the pin right at the event and I'll see where the pin is. But I'm like, I can't come there. So this is what you do. meet me on the corner of 48th and Broadway. OK, perfect. I'll be there. And you can start seeing them walking as I'm driving there. You got to know your area, know your market, tell people where to be because they want to go home. They don't care about that pen. They care about getting in your car. So tell people where to go. Have people where it's easier for you to get in. Like one dude the other day at the airport. This is what happened. As you can see, I'm in the Uber surge for $12 right now. 
but it's telling me to head to the lot. So I'm gonna head over to the lot. Hopefully it gives me this $12 surge. I'm not sure if it will or won't, but yeah. I just dropped somebody off with Lyft right now and the Lyft threw somebody else in my queue, but I was already past them already. So I told him I'm gonna cancel them and he can get the next driver. I don't I don't go around the airport to pick people up. If I'm, if I'm already past you already, I'm past you. You can go with the next driver. I don't do that U-turn shit. Lyft and Uber's notorious for that. They'll have somebody basically 100 feet behind you, but now you gotta drive all the way out of the airport and all the way back in to pick pick them up because they don't wanna walk 100 feet to get to where you are. So if they don't wanna walk, then I'll say, cool, don't walk, I'll just cancel you. So I just cancel them. That's just how I roll. You know, I'm very efficient like that. They can get the next driver. I don't play that shit. If you don't wanna walk 100 feet to get to me and you gonna make me drive out of the airport and all the way back in, yeah, you you probably for somebody else. You not for me. So I just had to do that to some dude just now. And that's why I turned my Uber app on because I'm gonna try to snag this Uber $12. So Lyft, Lyft knows how I am. They probably like, why Jeff always be canceling these rides at the airport? Because people don't want to walk to where I am. And I'm not driving out of the airport all the way back around again. I'm not doing that. I don't roll like that. If you that lazy, shit, get the next driver. And if it takes you, you know, 30, 40 minutes of waiting, guess what? You could have been in my car and we could have been gone. But wait another 30 minutes. Somebody will come get you. Yeah. I basically dropped somebody off at the terminal. And that was the day that I was at the airport. I didn't put it in that other video because I wanted to save that for something more important. I dropped the dude off at door number two. This dude was at door number eight. Like about 100 feet behind me. I don't know. Like, let's say, let's say 50, 60 yards. Dude didn't even want to walk to me. He wants to make me drive all the way up the hill through Terminal 3, all the way back around, Pat, almost to Terminal 4, cut between Terminal coming just to pick him up. And he's right behind me at door 8 saying no. So I said, ah, cancel, because I don't do that. If you can't help me, I can't help you. The next driver is for you. I'm off. And that's what I did. I took off. And guess what happened? Instead of his little ride, it was like 30 bucks for like 24 miles or something like that because it was one of those rides. I actually grabbed the first guy, the, the $17 ride. That's when I went to the, the head, the waiting lot, and I got that $17 ride, and I ended up making that $50 in 23 minutes. So I made $50 in 23 minutes because dude wouldn't leave door eight and walk to my car. So all he did was help me make more money. I don't fuck with situations like that. And when you don't, you end up making more money when you make a business. It was nothing personal. Dude just didn't want to walk from door eight to door two. Cool, shit, get the next car. Boop, cancel. I end up getting $50 for 23 minutes. That's how shit works out. When you handle it like a business, it moves like a business. But I'm not going to have this video running all day. We all got stuff to do. Today is Sunday. I'm going to get out, drive the Jeep around a little bit, see if I can make this green light come on. I really want to get this thing registered tomorrow. Um, Maybe I got, no, I have to go back by the 16th because I had them tested. They said, just come back around the 16th. So they're going to redo it on the 16th. But thank you guys for watching the video. Really appreciate the subs. Make sure you hit that notification bell because I'm finding out a lot of people aren't seeing when I'm doing a live or when I'm dropping new videos because they don't have the notification bell saying, hey, let me know when Jeff drops a new video. Not that you got to go watch the video or watch the live, but at least know it exists. Now, I got a playlist called Recently Uploaded Videos in case you didn't get a notification. Just go to my page, drop down a little bit. It'll say Recently Uploaded Videos. Check it out. Be like, oh, shit, I didn't know he put this on here. Oh, damn, I didn't know he put this on here. All my playlists got my videos corralled for easier navigation. If it's something you want to see, whether it's working on a Jeep, working on a Beamer, talking about life advice, you know, whatever. It's all in playlists. I got it all categorized for you. So you guys go out there, be safe, drive safely. And hey, let's get this money. It's a new week. Let's go prove that there is still money in ride share. A lot of people doubt us. Hey, don't doubt yourself.